Welcome to another edition of the Rolling Illini. I am Joshua Joins, joined always by Avery Schaefer and Miles Hill and Andrew Scalera with UP TV behind the camera. We're so glad to be back this week. Um, a lot happened when we were on break. I hope you all enjoyed your break. Uh, for those of you that are looking for the Illini Drive, the normal show in this spot, uh, Monday through Thursday, uh, we're kind of like the Illini Drive, but a little bit different in terms of uh, we talk about uh, adaptive athletics like wheelchair basketball, wheelchair rugby. And we have a lot to get to because a lot happened while we were on break. Uh, but before we get to that, let's uh, let's talk. Miles, how was your break? Oh man, my break was uh, it was pretty good actually. It was a nice little time in North Carolina, you know, enjoyable. So I'm uh, glad to be back. But it was good. How about you, man? Oh, my break was fantastic. Uh, uh, got to go back home to Atlanta, spend some time with my family. Avery, how was your break? My break was how should I put this? Hectic. I went to Chicago. Florida and New York, seeing various family. So nice, awesome, and uh, also I, had a twenty-first birthday. Oh yeah, yeah! Happy birthday, happy Avery. birthday, Avery! We're not gonna get into details on the twenty-first part, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, all right. Maybe and then, after the show, <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, also joining us in the studio this week, special guest Kevin Hamilton. Oh, yeah. uh, Kevin is on the. University of Illinois wheelchair basketball team is one of Miles and I's teammates, but he also just recently made uh, Team USA wheelchair rugby national team uh, in tryouts. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, but I guess one thing that we didn't talk about before the show that we might want to talk about is two days and, and oh. what that is. Oh. Uh, so, Miles, do you want to explain two days? Yeah, two days is uh, a blessing that God gave to us all. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, two days is. Uh, um, Basically, the wheelchair basketball athletes come back uh, before break ends. I, I think it was January 3rd was when two days started for yeah, us. Yeah, January 3rd. Um, and we do two sessions of two-hour practices each day. And we also, uh, three times a week, we did uh, a lift um, at Dres. So it was a very interesting time for me as a freshman. I'm mm -hmm. not going to lie. It was uh, The beginning was great. I thought I had it. And then... Yeah. I got to the Tuesday of the second week. I was like, man, this is killing me. Yes. But, uh, so we, we went Thursday and Friday of the first week of the new year, and then um, uh, we went Monday through Friday the next week, and then we yeah. played some scrimmage games uh, against Alberta, uh, yeah, Canada. The lights. So, yeah, uh, very excited uh, for <laughs> for that. Uh, uh, we had some great games. Got to run a lot of different lineups in the Alberta games. Uh a huge shout out to Alberta for coming down and playing us. It was cool to play some Canadians. Yeah, I uh, seen some old friends, um, but yeah, two days is, is tough, uh, and it's one of those things where it's one of the few times as a student athlete you can focus exclusively on your athletics. Yeah, we don't have school. Campus was super dead; like nobody else was on campus for the majority of the time. Yeah, uh, so it was it was really really good. But then we got to get into some other stuff. Um, so uh, January is always Team USA tryout time, oh, yeah. uh, especially in the Paralympic community. And so um, uh, our teammate Noah Hotchkiss went to uh, sure. Team USA men's basketball tryout. Didn't make the team, but he said it was a great learning experience. Um, uh, really excited for the future of him. Uh, but a lot of Illini made the team, or, or former Illini made the team, uh, including uh, team captain Serio, uh, Steve Serio. Uh, who else? Uh, oh, who else do we have here from Illinois? Man, yeah, I think it's. I, I believe we had. Seven of them? Does that sound right? Uh, there was quite a bit. I know. What's Brian Bell? Uh, Brian Bell, yeah. Um, I'm trying to go back through. <laughs> yeah, man. It's, it's too many Illini. Yeah, the, the, there were a lot of Illini. Uh, but then that was during two days. Then this week, I uh, just wrapped up on Wednesday night, was the women's Team USA tryout. I believe we had seven current Illini go to that one from our women's team. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so here are some statistics uh, from that one. Um, so the former Illini, we had three former Illini, Megan Blunk, Caitlin Eden, also, a.k.a. Squirrel, <laughs> and uh, Shelby Gruss. They all graduated and all had been on Team USA before. And then current Illini that tried out were Abby Farrell, Jordan Lee, Ali Ibanez, Stella McMillan, 
Emily Oberst, Marley Wagstaff, and Erica Wilson. Yeah. Um, so they were up at the Colorado Springs training facility for three days of, of two sessions a day, and, and yeah. it was really intense for them, they said. Uh, and when the, the action was all said and done, uh, Megan Blunk and uh, Caitlin Eden made the team as the former Illini. Uh, also, uh, uh, Ali Abanez made the team, and Emily Obers. Emily Obers made the team. So of uh, course. <laughs> uh, so four four Illini, uh, and 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 the the national team. The thing that was interesting about the women's tryout was that it was both a U twenty five tryout, which means under twenty five uh, national team tryout, and a yeah. senior team tryout and the thing about the women's program is that a lot of um the people that were trying out are going to be on both teams because they're under 25 team usa is very young yeah. and they have some high school players on that team uh three or yeah. four that made th- made it through first cut uh for the senior team and also made the u25 team yeah so it'll be really interesting to watch uh they're headlined by paralympians rose hollerman abby duncan yeah uh, rose hollerman for those of you that don't know is one of the best players in the world in wheelchair basketball so uh uh, things are looking out for Team USA, but we just wanted to give you an update on that. Yeah. But before we get to anything else, we just want to let you know that the Rolling Illini is brought to you by the Division of Intercollegiate Athletics here at the University of Illinois. Oh, yeah. uh, basketball is going on. I went to a basketball game with my boy Matt Talbot. Oh, yeah. How uh, was that? Last week it was great. We played Michigan. It was yeah. a great game all the way around. Uh, saw Brad Underwood throw his coat jacket into the third row. <laughs> oh, uh, yes. Only at the University of Illinois. Yeah, I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw it. Um, <laughs> Made some Michigan fans laugh with what we were saying. So it was, it was successful overall. And guess what, guys? The people listening to this show, you should be there too. You should be there cheering on our Illini. And they're, your, they're a young squad. They put up 90-something points on Minnesota. 95. 95 oh points on goodness. Minnesota. So no. it's it's a young team that's really coming together. It's, it's showing some signs. Not quite there yet, but Underwood is definitely working some magic. Absolutely. So... So get out there, support the Illini, both in that and then gymnastics is kicking off. There's a whole bunch of oh, other yeah. sports you can check out. So I implore you to please support all the sports here at the University of Illinois and uh, the Division of Intercollegiate Athletics. We're going to take a quick break, and then we'll be right back uh, to interview Kevin Hamilton about his experience with USA Rugby. So stay tuned. Hello and welcome back to Rolling Illini on WPG 107.1. Uh, for those of you that don't know, you can catch our show Wednesdays at 9 p.m. on UPTV Channel 6. I just found out. So uh, UPT Channel 6, Wednesdays at 9 p.m. for this week's show. And I am so excited to introduce our guest for this week's show. Uh, he's a longtime friend of mine, played wheelchair basketball. Uh, we had a legendary game when I was in high school where the halftime score was 9-8, to eight, which is not normal. <laughs> um, but uh, this... When, when were tryouts? Tryouts were January 3rd, so the first day of two days. Yeah, so January yeah. 3rd, uh, he went to Lakeshore Foundation, which is in Alabama. Oh, yeah. Uh, and is the training center for USA Wheelchair Rugby and tried out for the team uh, and made it. He made the national team uh, uh, the youngest member of that team, correct? Currently, right now. Yeah, currently the youngest member of the Team USA Wheelchair Rugby team. So, Kevin, welcome to the show. It's a pleasure. Oh, yeah. All right. So, Kevin, uh, I would assume that a lot of our listeners don't know a lot about wheelchair rugby. And it's also known as quad rugby. Or if you've seen the uh, documentary Murder Ball, uh, it's sometimes described as Murder Ball. So, Kevin, will you describe a little bit about the game of wheelchair rugby for us? So, unlike basketball, it is, like, pretty much full contact sport with the chair. So... For example, in basketball, you have to have certain chair position on people. In rugby, even though it's smart to play chair position, realistically, you could bash someone on the side of each either wheel or in the front as many times as you want. However, if you bash the side of the back wheel from, like, you're coming in from behind, someone has the ball, or even not with the ball, it's going to be classified as a spin, and it's a flagrant because you're putting someone, a player's health in harm's way. I didn't know that. And so scoring works. It's it's almost like football in a sense, right? Yeah. You you you, you, you take a ball and you try to get it to the other baseline on a basketball court, correct? Correct. Yeah. So it's played on a basketball court, which is important because uh, rugby is usually played on grass. Uh, grass would be nearly impossible to push on. <laughs> yeah, it would, it would be really tough to play. Yeah, that'd yeah, be hard. Like right. and, yeah. You imagine. <laughs> and so, the, one of the requirements for uh, for uh, wheelchair rugby that's different from 
wheelchair basketballs that you have to be a quadriplegic. Correct. Uh, so talk about that and how that affects the classification system. So before I get underway, a quadriplegic is somebody disabled in all four limbs of the body, while a paraplegic is someone disabled in only in two limbs. Um, in basketball, you find mostly paraplegics disabled in the lower half of their body, but not the upper half, whereas in quad rugby, uh, you have to have four disabled limbs or th technically only three disabled limbs, but you, you can technically still be classed in if everything goes properly, but um, most, most of the time it's four, and it's why it's called quad rugby. Yeah, so it's, it's called quad rugby, and then the classification system, so... For basketball, as we've discussed before on the show, it's uh, 1 to uh, 4.5. Uh, what is it in rugby, and like, what are the different like general differences? It is a 0 0.5, or a nickel, as we like to call them, <laughs> to uh, 3.5. Um, the differences are in hand, like the amount of hand function, tricep function, um, bicep function, just how much function you can get from your shoulders and hands. And then also the amount of core function that you would have. So right now I am classified as a 3.0 because I have a 1.0 trunk. And the, this is out of a 1.5 mm -hmm. scale. They class each individually. And then I have 2.0 hands. Nice. So so it's kind of different in basketball where they, they do both. They, they classify both the upper body and the lower body instead of just the whole body, correct? Cor correct. Is that what I just got out of that? Correct. Uh, I... I don't, I'm not 100% sure. They might check the lower body maybe if, if you're an amputee, but mm -hmm. other than that, it's pretty much just the upper body. Okay, nice. And so uh, this was your first tryout, correct? Let's, let's, let's get into that a little bit. Yeah. First ever tryout. It All right. Was so wild. what were your expectations going into the tryout? Expectations? Um, I was the youngest guy at the camp, so I really did not expect to make the team. I'm going to be honest. It was, yeah. it was, I expected to do, I, I came in and I'm just thinking, okay, Kevin, just play as hard as you can, play as well as you can, and we'll see how far you can get. And then I ended up making the team. Yeah. Um, but going into the first day, right out of the gate, they just bash your head in. Um, you got to do a timed mile on the Lakeshore carpet, which is like a track <sighs> thing. <sighs> So, so Miles and I have played uh, <laughs> basketball tournaments at Lakeshore Foundation, so we know how awful that track is. It's a tough scene. Right? It's, yeah. it's pushing on a carpet. Yeah. It's much. really pushing on a There's carpet. There's a lot of um, friction, Yeah, to say the least. That's yeah. a tough one, but carry on. Um, so you got to do – you have a timed one. First, they first went with the low pointers, and then the high pointers went. And I, I'm part of the high pointer group, so I went with them. And then right after that, we were doing other sorts of conditioning testing – for example, we did this thing called a diamond drill where they have four cones set up, two at each baseline, or one at each baseline, correct me, and then one at like each, at like the side of half court, so like the bit, like the line that connects half court and the sideline. Mm -hmm. And basically you have to sprint around all four of those diamond, or all four of those cones in a diamond as fast as you can, and you have to do it, three, you do three laps of those, and then you have to do that three times on on your right side, and then three times on your left side. Hmm. And rugby chairs, something I did not describe earlier. Rugby chairs are heavier and like, like a lot heavier than basketball chairs, so it is not easy to push those things. But, I mean, because the whole point of the sport is just to bang into people, correct? Like that's a major part of the defense is just chair on chair contact. Oh uh, yeah, chair on chair contact is a major part of the yeah, defense. So that's why they have to be heavier. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, everybody's just going to flip over. Like, the low-point chairs in rugby have these little pickers in the front of them. Mm -hmm. If that was in basketball and only basketball, like, like basketball low-pointers had those, then I think I think every, someone would flip on every single possession. And right. would someone would eventually get hurt. Wow. Yeah. Um, so, I, I guess, did, did do you think that those kind of kind of test played a bigger role than you expected them to or did you have that expectation going in um i i didn't do as well as i wanted to on mm -hmm. some of the tests i think the key with those tests is to not tire like show that you're not tired even after you're doing those tests and then go and 
for the next session and just play your heart out and show that hey you're fast you're strong you're quick you can you can play with at that level and not get tired out after playing just like two or three minutes because you're already dead from the first session so, so those are really like you would say mental toughness test at the end of the day yes yeah, yeah. What, so, go ahead so we know that psychology plays a role in wheelchair sports perhaps more than able-bodied sports how was the psychological side for you uh i felt psychologically at least i was in really good spirits um one thing with rugby is a turnover in rugby is far more costly than a turnover in any other wheelchair sport i know so it can just turning the ball over can be really devastating on someone's mental psych so it's it's um it it can sometimes if you're in a really tight game and you turn it over with maybe like i don't know a minute 30 left it can be really tough to just go out there and get that next play because one one other thing with rugby is that you score and then it's already the next play like it's just constant there, there's really yeah. no stoppage in play unless there's a flagrant of what i described earlier or a substitution or yeah. like the ball goes out of bounds so yeah. I, I've never played rugby. There's a penalty box, like in hockey, right? Yes. Yeah, that's what I thought. And so, like, how long are the penalties? Is it, like, the same as hockey? Or So the penalties, the person who committed the penalty cannot come in until the, um, until the other team scores. Really? Wow. With that being said, if the other team doesn't score and the team in which the guy committed the penalty on somehow is able to steal the ball in some way, shape, or form mm -hmm. and cause a turnover then he has to stay in there for up to two minutes. Okay, so either until they score. So it's just like hockey. Yeah. It's until you score or two minutes. Yeah. Yeah. And and so talk about, like, what is a normal score in, in rugby. wheelchair rugby? Um, usually what happens is a high pointer gets the ball from an inbound. The inbound is usually either... A 2-0, a 2-5, or probably a 1-0 or 1-5. Mm -hmm. So those mid mid to high pointers yeah. and um or low pointers, low to mid pointers, I mean. Um part of me. And they usually inbound the ball to one of the high pointers on the court. Uh there's a lot of different ways to score in rugby, but I would say the most common is probably a pick and roll in the half or in the lower half court and then just the pass over the top for an easy score with no one in front of the person receiving. The yeah, ball. I'm. Ass I'm assuming when you say pick and roll, you're referring to something similar to a pick and roll in basketball. Correct. Is that right? Correct. Um, you're. It's a little different in some res retrospects, but it's essentially the same motion process. Just some of the key chair elements, like in basketball, it has to be axle, cast, or any pick, but yeah. it doesn't have to be like that in wheelchair rugby. Okay. Um, so, did anybody give you advice heading into back to tryouts? Like, did anybody give you advice about how to handle the tryouts or, or any good advice? Um, just, I remember some people just being like hey you know good luck just you know even if you get cut keep your head up you yeah. you still got this just keep working hard um and just play the best of your ability don't let anything out there like just try as hard as you can pretty much yeah i was going to ask what what um you had a lot of support i know definitely from Illinois, what's your basketball? All the adapted athletics here, the current players and, and staff, they were really supporting you. But what did you get from your, your family before heading in? I know it's kind of big to kind of see what your family impact is on you. And uh, my family, I mean, they they pretty much just gave me a hug and said, good luck, honey, and then <laughs> they sent me on my way. I think they believed I would make it. I yeah. think they, they have this, like, quiet belief in me. Yeah. And... and uh, you were keeping us updated throughout the process, all the guys on the wheelchair basketball team. And, and you talked about there were there were different cuts. So it's different. Like in wheelchair basketball, all the cuts are made at the end of the camp. But in this particular rugby tryout, there were cuts made throughout the camp, correct? Correct. Um, I, th now, in the cuts, the cut system is different at every single tryout. Mm -hmm. But at this particular one, there was a cut made after the first day. And then 
halfway through the second day, there was a cut from what I remember. And then I think the same thing halfway through the third day. And then there was the final cut. Wow. And, and so take me through, like, how, how did they announce the cuts? Um, so after, um, well, for the first one, I'll use the first one as an example because um, we just woke up and there was a just a piece of paper with all the names of the cuts on it. Um, now, during some of the other cuts, some people knew knew before that piece of paper was let out. So the coaches didn't announce it was just a piece of paper? Uh, yeah, well, they would put that piece of paper oh. up, up before everybody woke up. Nice. So the goal was not to see the name on your list. Yeah. Or not, or rather, not to see your name on the list. Yeah, and I mean, and as cool as it was for that, you did, like, you could right. just feel, I felt the love from everybody just like, and including myself, we we were all very gracious towards the ones being cut, like, yeah. because it's, I mean, I know I could be in that position one day, and I know I could have been in that position in that camp at some time. Yeah. So it's not an easy thing to go through, especially for people who, for first timers who yeah. had a high hopes, or anybody who may have been on a national team prior. Yeah. Uh, just one question for you, man. What What was it like the moment you found out you you made it past that final cut? That's that's really what we all wanted to know. I here. felt everything. <laughs> Every emotion felt through my body. And I gave a blank stare. Just, it was like, you would expect me to have, like, I, and don't get me wrong, I smiled. But at first, I just had this blank stare because I couldn't believe it. I actually could not believe it. I was, the 20 minutes leading up to, like, the announcement process was nerve-wracking, to say the least. I... There are very few things I can recall that I was more nervous for in my life other than maybe like a stats exam or like a <laughs> physics final. <laughs> or maybe an acceptance letter, maybe. Oh, uh, actually, yeah. I would I would put the acceptance letter yeah. up there too. <laughs> Forever student athlete. That's Kevin. That's Kevin for you. <laughs> student and student athlete. That's Kevin. All right. So then, you know, uh, kind of, kind of going back, like, what was, what was kind of your thoughts as, like, you realized that you weren't being cut, like, after each cut, like, what was your emotions between each cut? Uh, just keep playing how I was playing because mm -hmm. I felt like I was playing pretty well, and like the, over the course of the camp, other guys would come up to me and like, hey, you're playing really well, and I, I don't know what's gonna happen, whether you're gonna get cut or not, but you should be very proud of how you, of how you're playing, and it was the other guys throughout the camp. That really helped me, and I'm so grateful for them. Yeah. All right, Kevin. So now that you made the team, what's next in terms of uh, USA Rugby? Yeah, man. Um, define that in terms of my personal schedule, the team schedule. Well, your schedule and the team schedule. Okay, so with my schedule, it's just keep you know pushing every day, keep working out every week, multiple times a week. Uh, make sure my shoulders are in great shape. If there's one thing that's really important with wheelchair rugby, it's keeping, and really any wheelchair athlete in general, it's yeah. keeping your shoulders healthy. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, the team schedule, our first training camp is at the end of April, and then we have our first tournament, at, which is actually at the Lakeshore Foundation. It's the Four Nations Tournament. I forget which nations are coming down. but Is Japan one of them? Because Japan is... I would be shocked if they weren't one of them. Yeah, because Japan and the United States are the perennial powerhouses of uh, uh, and Australia and Australia and Australia and Canada. I don't know if Canada is going to be there, but Canada's say. Canada's uh, they're they're usually pretty pretty good. Yeah, great and Great Britain for the last uh, four four. Is that so program years ran been... by Marty Morris, by chance. Great Britain? No, uh, Canada. I have no clue okay. who Canada's run by because they just got a new coach um, after. Kevin Orr left them yeah. for Japan. Yeah, Kevin Orr was a uh, is a Illinois grad. Yeah, uh, U of I grad. Kevin Orr uh, made that Canada program turn into something, and then left to uh, overhaul the Japanese program. So yeah, uh, the Illini connection right there. Uh, and so you'll play the. When is the Four Nations tournament? Like what month? Uh, it's in mid May. I forget the exact date. I want to say it's around like May seventeenth, May eighteenth, something nice. like that. Okay, and then so finals week. Uh, yeah, yeah, actually. That's, well, that's good. I, I don't think I have a final that week. Though. What perfect timing. Yeah, right. I actually think finals uh, end before that because I have a final like May the 3rd. 
I, yeah. I know grades are have to be in though by the 19th. Yeah, so, so it, there could potentially be a final on the 18th or 17th. Or okay. I don't, from what I've seen on my schedule, I don't have one, which is yeah. thank the Lord. Yeah, I was say that's close. And then <laughs> the big, big tournament that this team is going to head to is the Parapan Games in Peru. Correct. And June? No, August, 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 and then the early part of September. Yeah, and mm -hmm. uh, what what are your expectations going into that? Like, like, are you excited? Uh... I'm excited, and I don't. Well, they still have to make cuts for that team because, like, we're on the training squad. Which and what's different between this and the basketball is that you like they could bring me for one tournament and then not bring me for another mm -hmm. international tournament. So I don't know if I'm going to go to pair pans, but regardless, I want to win that win the whole thing. So oh, yeah. That's the mentality yeah. you have. You gotta yeah, win. absolutely. Why would you do anything else? <laughs> no, but yeah, it's uh, for, for, it's it's gonna be an exciting summer regardless of just nothing but pushing and hard work. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Well, Kevin, thank you so much for joining us on the show. Uh, we are all cheering for you. Yes. Uh, you know that, and uh, we look forward to that. Uh, we'll be right back here to wrap things up on Rolling Your Line Night right after this break. Stay tuned to WPGU 1071 right here. Hello and welcome back. You are listening to the Rolling Illini on WPGU 1071 Champaign Urbana. Also, we'll be on UPTV on Wednesday at 9 p.m. Tune in if you enjoy the show because then you can see our pretty faces that you can't see while listening on the radio. <laughs> um, so, this is usually an adapted athletic show, but uh, today I kind of want to end the show with something that affects the uh, disability community as a whole. Um, there's a new movie out. Uh, it's a Kevin Hart movie and Brian Cranston. Brian Cranston was in Breaking Bad. Kevin Hart's the comedian. Um, called The Upside. It's based off of a French movie called The Untouchables, um, and it talks about uh, the relationship between a a poor uh, African-American man and uh, becoming a caregiver for a very wealthy, uh, fairly new quadriplegic, would you say? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fairly new quadriplegic, and, and how that impacts both of their lives. And uh, uh, the the disabled character, or the rich man in the, the movie, uh, is in a power chair. Um, the kind of the outrage for the the movie is called The Upside. The outrage for that was that uh, a able-bodied actor, Brian Cranston, played the disabled character uh, in the movie. Or yeah, the movie. So um, Avery, what's your opinion on that? So first thing I want to address is that the best thing to do when portraying characters with disabilities is do your best to get an actor that has the disability being portrayed. <laughs> but why, like, uh, so, I mean, we're going to talk a little bit about the movie. Yeah. But, like, I actually thought one of the bright spots of the movie was how Brian Cranston played that role. I thought he, he did it justice. He I, did I think he did job. a really good job. Like, that was actually a highlight of the movie for me. He, he did, but... He did, given the circumstances that he did it in, it, it was, in my opinion, this is a premature uh, assessment, but a Oscar-worthy performance. Wow. It, 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 was, it was one of the more realistic uh, representations of what it is to have a disability in cinema that I've ever seen. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I can't recall another portrayal that, that was as good or better yeah. than what Cranston did, except maybe in Speechless, for those of you yeah. who've seen that. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the actor in Speechless is also in a power wheelchair, but he, in real life, also has cerebral palsy as a disabled actor. Yeah, I thought Brian Cranston's performance was really, really good. I thought it really did justice. Um, Kevin Hart kind of let me down a little bit. I He just wasn't believable in, in like, the heavy hitting parts, mm -hmm. and I think I think that's what's going to hurt it in, like, the movie season. Uh, I know this isn't a movie critic show, but, like, I, yeah. I just didn't really believe it. But I thought Brian Cranston did a good job, and... You know, th there had been talks in, like, disability Twitter, if you will, about um, 
you know, kind of the outrage about Brian Cranston playing it. But it didn't really come to the forefront until there was a segment on Trevor Noah's uh, uh, Daily Show, the Daily Show, about it, that it really became mainstream. Uh, Avery, did you see that by chance? No, but but I did read an article. I believe it was in The Guardian, yes, that commented on the phenomenon of the upside and Intouchables as a series. And one of the things I found most interesting, and I'm curious what you guys think of this, is, is that it kind of... The article seemed to mention that the reason why movies like this aren't common in the in the ci cinematic uh, landscape is that there's so much fear of misportrayal that that directors don't want to do it or actors don't want to yeah. misrepresent it. And yeah, a absolutely. But I, I think one of the ways that you can prevent that from happening is by making sure that disabled actors play it. Brian Cranston did a fantastic job, like I've I said agree. over and over and over again. Yes. But uh, I, one thing that Trevor, like Trevor Noah's portrayal was set, said by some to dehumanize disabilities and whatever, but one of the really, I think, poignant points he brought up was an able-bodied actor can play both the able-bodied part and the disability part, but it is very difficult for a disabled actor to play an able-bodied person. Yeah. And so those are so few and far between that when it's not offered to an actor who has a disability, then that literally takes away all of their opportunities, opportunities to act. Yeah. Um, I, I do think that there's a fear, and, and, and rightfully so, about you know misbetraying disabilities. And the way you do that is, if you do have an able-bodied actor, make sure that they talk to people who have disabilities, um, and, and get rid of that. And, and you know, following around somebody with a disability and kind of shadowing them so that they know what it's like, I think, is, yeah. is a big thing to make sure you do it right. Kind of, I, they call it method acting. Yeah. Um, and, and making sure that you portray it right. Because it's, I think it's really important, and I think in the past, Hollywood has done a poor job of portraying disabilities. Yeah. But I think <laughs> Brian Cranston did as good a yes. job as anybody. Yeah. It's the uh, best job I've ever seen. Yeah. No, I as, would... As I said. Yeah. yeah, I would go ahead and say that, I'm. of course, um, I am unhappy to hear that Brian Cranston played the role without actually having a disability. I would like to see more actors with disabilities in big time shows and television I know or in uh, movies I know the actor from Atypical does not actually have um, autism mm. um, neither does uh, oh, what's the name of the movie I think it's or the show The Good Doctor um, and you see a lot of, of Drake roles. And like you're saying, oh yeah I mean, that's how we really want to go about it. Drake <laughs> definitely doesn't have a disability but what what I really want to say to, to point that out and, and really touch on the part that you were saying about taking those opportunities away from actors with disabilities is that it's really big for people with disabilities to try to get out and and do things and, and contribute to society and we talk about how we want to get people with disabilities into society to work um, we don't want people on SSI mm -hmm. the reason we don't want people on SSI and the reason we have SSI is so they can give back to the economy absolutely and when you're having people who are trying to go out here and act acting is not something that you just do because you need a job it's because it's something you care about it's something you think you're good at something that you are good at and so then when we have people with disabilities that want to play these roles and you're giving them to people who are able-bodied you're taking away from that job market and then also hurting kind of a, a entire part of our society that we're trying to um trying to uplift and trying to to put forward so it, it i mean he did do a great job, don't get me wrong, and I think they did a really good job of portraying it um, and did a great job of, of actually portraying disability well, unlike a lot of different shows um, and, and movies, but I definitely think that they should have found someone with a disability that, that could have played that role well. So. Yes, it would have been much better, Yeah, without a doubt. Absolutely. Okay, so we're going to end the show this week by talking about what the wheelchair basketball team has going on next week. So on Thursday, the wheelchair basketball team will be leaving for its first official tournament in 2019. It'll be going to Auburn University yes, uh, in Alabama, and we will be playing uh, the University of Edinburgh, Alabama, and Auburn. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so those games will happen uh, Friday at 9 a.m. against Edinburgh, 
7 p.m. against Auburn. Auburn, and then 9 a.m. Saturday morning against the University of Alabama. Yeah. Uh, and one of those games will be missing one of our starters, uh, Willie, who will be with Team Canada, uh, but he will fly in for the 7 p.m. game. So uh, I, we're looking for a good start for the Illini in wheelchair basketball yeah. season, both men's and women's. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, I do believe that we will have a show next week. I think one of our old producers might be joining in, and, and uh, Brian Wilson will probably be back. So yeah. uh, we're hoping to have a show for you guys next week. We really appreciate you joining us this week on Rolling Line Eye. Oh, yeah. Once again, thanks again to Kevin Hamilton and Andrew Scalera yes, with sir. UPTV for My uh, pleasure. all that they do. And uh, you know what? Have a great week, guys, and keep it rolling. Oh, yeah.